we're going to be taking a look at this lab, reflected cross-site scripting with some SVG markup allowed. SVG stands for Scalar Vector Graphics. It can be included within HTML markup, it allows us to create images using vectors. We'll see why it's relevant. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. So if we attempt some regular cross-site scripting payload in the search box here, for example, it could be something like image source equals zero on error equals alert. Let's see what happens if we submit that. You can see we get a JSON response tag is not allowed. This is actually from the web application firewall. So our request is not even hitting the web app itself. And if we try out different tags, we'll see that it's not really allowing the vast majority of tags. Even if we try something simple like injecting a H1 tag, once again, we get intercepted by the web application firewall. Now, just because the tags we've tried manually don't bypass the firewall doesn't mean that no tags will get past the firewall. What we want to do is iteratively brute force the whole range of tags just to see if any of them can evade interception by the firewall. And that's where something like burps intruder feature comes in handy. So you can see a copy of the request here. And if we just right click and choose send to intruder, we can iterate through different payloads for that search input field. So first of all, we want to clear any existing payload markers. We're interested in this search param. We know we're going to inject a tag and the payload marker is going to belong in the middle here. The idea is we want to iterate over different types of tags to see if any of them will actually bypass the firewall. Now we do actually need some payloads, which will take the position of that payload marker. And this is where we can take a look at the port swigger cheat sheet. So we want to copy tags to clipboard, head back to burp, and we can simply paste our whole list of tags into the payload settings section. Once that's done, we can choose start attack and we're interested in the status code returned by each of these attacks. So once the attack is complete, we can filter by status code. Anytime we get a 400 response, it means it was blocked by the firewall. We can see the vast majority of tags were blocked, but some of them are making it through. For example, we can see SVG tag. We have a 200 response. We're going to be making use of that. And also we'll be making use of animate transform, which is actually something that exists inside SVG markup. Taking a quick look at the MDN web docs, we can see animate transform and we can see example usage. So we have SVG tag and somewhere between the opening and closing SVG tags, we have an animate transform tag. And without going into a lot of detail regarding SVG, because it's a whole topic in itself, we can see the output of the way this animate transform is used because we obviously have a triangle defined using SVG, but as a result of this animate transform tag, we can see that the triangle is slowly rotating. So the key right now is not to understand the exact SVG markup and simply to have an understanding of the rough purpose of animate transform and where it exists relative to SVG tags. So heading back to our intruder attack, we know we can get an SVG tag through and we know that inside that SVG tag, we can have an animate transform. But the issue here is we actually need something that's going to launch our cross-site scripting attack in the form of an event listener. And we don't necessarily know which event listeners are going to make it past the web application firewall. So this is where Burp Intruder comes in handy once again. So we're going to pretend that we have some kind of listener and we're going to designate that with a payload marker. And we'll just specify equals one for now. So it's not going to do anything at this stage. We simply want to know which event listeners will bypass the web application firewall. Obviously the percent 20 simply stands for a space, but it's URL encoded. So heading back over to payloads, we're going to change our payload set now, rather than copying tags, which is what we did previously. We're now going to copy events to the clipboard. Back in Burp Suite, we can paste our list of events under payload settings. We can then start the intruder attack. Once again, we want to filter by status and we can see the vast majority of event listeners are blocked by the firewall, but we do get a 200 response for the on begin event listener. 
So the obvious question is, what does the onBegin event listener do? Well, remember that we are hypothetically defining an animation with animate transform and onBegin specifies code to execute at the beginning of the animation. So back to our search input, we should have access to all of the information we need to construct our payload. So we're going to have an SVG tag. We're going to have animate transform with a capital T. We're going to have an on begin event listener. And when that particular event is triggered, we're going to execute the alert function. So let's search for this particular payload. You can see we get the alert popped up to the page. And we're of course interested in the URL because this is a type of reflected cross-site scripting attack. So we're going to grab the URL here. We can copy this. And if we can get this link into the hands of any user, then we can run arbitrary JavaScript inside the victim's browser. Now, although we solved the lab, we didn't actually trigger the flag. Normally this payload would trigger the flag. And at the time of making this video, even the official payload from Burps Web Security Academy is not triggering the flag. So I guess temporary issue with the lab. Having said that, this is the lab solution and hopefully it triggers the flag in your case. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching.